Hi. We are going to look again at Acts. We are going to be in chapter 15, and we are going to go back to the business session that they were having there trying to decide what are they going to do with all these Gentiles. So, how to handle this as the church is, is not just Jewish people, different people. So, how are we going to do this? And so they got together. That's the important thing. Uh, when you got a problem in the church and when you got something going on, or when you got a, I don't even know if you call it a problem, you got a difference of opinions as you had at this point. You got to get together and make a decision. You know, people always, unfortunately, people think, well, uh, they think peace is not having any differences. And if you get two people together, you're going to have three different opinions. You've got to be able to talk about things, and you got to talk about them in a way that it's not going to hurt anybody, but that is going to handle a situation. Uh, I am so disappointed so many times with Christians who don't want to, you know, oh, we're going to have peace. And, and what they mean by peace is we're going to brush everything under the carpet. We're, uh, we're not going to deal with troublesome matters. Uh, we're not going to deal with troublesome members. Uh, we're just going to, you know, try to make it all rosy and all cocoa puffs and, and <laughs> vanilla ice cream. That's what I heard a guy say one time. That's not true. You know, you can't do that. You got to deal with things. I mean, look at Jesus. Jesus was one of the most confrontational. People try to make him out to be this sweet little Jesus. You know, he was. He was a good man. He was sweet. But he also dealt with problems, even among his own people. You know, how many times did he sit down with the disciples and say, guys, you need to stop arguing about this. It's That's just really kind of stupid. Now, you know, uh, that's really the way it needs to be. you got to deal with it. And I don't mean to be hateful. I don't mean you don't try to dominate over other people. You know, people sometimes get into a discussion in church and especially in business session and over matters and say, well, Let's argue because I want my way and your way is wrong. And it's always about something. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to use this word because in some way, some people get offended, but really it is. It's stupid. Um, arguing about stupid things. Uh, we don't ever argue about serious things. We don't ever argue about who's going to be the first person to go out and witness we argue about the color of the carpet, or uh, the length of the service, or the pastor isn't doing what I think he ought to do. We argue about really stupid, dumb things. We need to argue about things that are important. And uh, to reach not even peace, but to reach the will of God. People say, well, I want peace. And what they mean is, is I don't want anybody to be fighting. Well, I'm sorry. People are going to fight. And there are some people that just love to fight. And you're just going to have to get in with them and say, look, we're, we're here to make a decision. We're here to live in God's will. And that's what peace is. Peace is living in God's will and not living the way you want to or I want to. And you're going to have to give up some and I'm going to have to give up some. But together, what we're going to try to do is get us out of the way and get God brought to the forefront. So that's all I'm going to say about that <laughs> in the words of Boris Gump. So that's what they're doing. They're discussing things, and that's very, very important. Important to discuss. So in verse 12, chapter 15, let's pray. 
Thank you, Lord, for these words. Thank you that you show us that your people can meet and make decisions. They can care about each other and they can lead, not let the devil have his way. So help us always to be trying to defeat the adversary and bring victory to the Son of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Everyone was silent. They listened. Barnabas and Paul told them what God had done for the Gentiles. Barnabas and Paul told the people how God did miracles and wonderful things by means of them. Barnabas and Paul. After they had finished speaking, James said this. Listen, brothers, Simon Peter has told us this. He told us that God first showed that he cared about the Gentiles in this way. He took some Gentiles to be his own people. This is the same as what the prophets wrote. They wrote this. The Lord says, now we're in verse 16. The Lord says, after this, I will return. I will build David's house again, the house that fell. I will repair it. I will build it up and I will make it strong again. Then all the other nations will decide to worship me. That is all the Gentiles that I have chosen to be mine. I say this, I am the Lord, I'm the boss. I promised it long ago. James continued to speak. This is what I think. We should not cause trouble for the Gentiles who are deciding to trust God. Instead, we should write a letter to them. We should tell them these things. They must not eat any food that people have offered to idols. They must not eat animals that people have strangled. They must not eat meat that has blood in it. They must not sin in sexual ways. If something is sexual, it has a connotation with sex. Every Sabbath, people read Moses' law in the synagogues. People have preached the words in every city. This has continued for many years. James, as those of you who know who have studied his book know, is very practical. And in fact, his, uh, his letter in uh, the last part of scripture is one of my favorite ones because it is so practical. And uh, James has a definite wisdom inside of his heart. And uh, so we're going to read through this and I'll see and make sure that you understand what James said. Okay, verse 12. There was a disagreement about Gentiles, but Christians from both sides showed what that they respected each other. They listened to what Barnabas and Paul said. They did not interrupt. When there is a disagreement in the church today, we should do the same. We must never forget that we are brothers and sisters in God's family. Here, Luke puts Barnabas' name first. This is probably because people in Jerusalem knew Barnabas better. They knew him better than they knew Paul. And there was, you know, some bad memories with Paul who was formerly, you know. Paul was the guy who was uh, the former uh, persecutor of, of the Christians. Verse 13, then this James, who we're talking about here, was the brother of Jesus. In reference Mark 6, verse 3. He wrote about another letter that is in the New Testament, the one I was just talking about. Um, he emphasized the connection between our faith and our actions. He also talked about wisdom from heaven. Among other things, he called this wisdom kind and genuine. Here in Acts, he showed that he had his wisdom from heaven. He listened to the Pharisees. He listens to Peter and Paul and Barnabas. Then he boils all down into a solution that everybody should be able to work with. Verses 14 through 18. James reminded them about what Peter had said. James did not mention Paul and Barnabas' report. Peter's words would have uh, more authority in Jerusalem because he was a leader there. Uh, he took some Gentiles to be his own people. 
That's what we're talking about in verse 14. In the Old Testament, God's own people meant Israel. So now James was saying that Christian Gentiles now also belonged to God's new people. And Paul will say later that they were grafted into the tree. They were uh, part of the tree of God's family. He provided proof from the scriptures. He needed to do this. Now, when we have disputes and when we have disagreements, it's best to go to the scriptures and see what the scriptures have to say about it. If you don't have a scripture, then continue to search. And, you know, don't just go out there and say, well, oh, brother so-and-so says this. Okay? He's not scriptural. I mean, he's not the scriptures. If you can find the scriptures, the scriptures are your best resource, as always. Uh, the scriptures. He needed to do this. It is important decisions that church must agree with the scriptures. This is true today. James also spoke words from the book of Amos, Amos 9, 11 through 12. If you haven't read the book of Amos in the Old Testament, can I encourage you to do that? I, I really need to preach that through sometime. It is an amazing book. Amos had some really good ideas there in the Old Testament and some things that God really inspired him uh, to say. Christians understand that verse 16 is a prophecy about Christ's resurrection. It is also a prophecy about the growth of his church. God will include people from all nations in his future kingdom. Verse 17. Verse 19 through 20. James offered his opinions. Faith was enough for Gentiles who were deciding to trust God. The Jews should not make it difficult for them. The Gentiles did not have to become Jews, and therefore they did not have to receive circumcision. But they did have to respect the Jews. So they should not do things that would offend Jews very much. This was all for harmony and everybody getting along in the church. It's not a compromise. It's just, hey, this is my part. That's your part. Let's work together. Okay, so we know that. Um, God will include people from all nations in his future kingdom. James 19 through 20, James offered his opinions. Faith was enough for Gentiles. Okay. James asked those Gentiles not to do these specific four things. They should not eat food that people had offered to idols because that was that was a way of showing that you were going wrong with idol worship. Okay, uh, So if some people worship idols, those Gentiles should not have any connection with that. Paul goes through that whole discussion in 1 Corinthians chapter 8. They should not eat animals that people had strangled. Okay, uh, Two reasons for this. Even in the sacrifices in the Old Testament, they may have killed animals, but they did it in a hu humane way. They would take a particular knife, and if you look up the knife, it's curved, it's curved in this particular way, and they would slice the jugulars and let the animal bleed out to die because that was very humane uh, because you didn't bash its head or do something gross. Uh, you let it bleed out, which was a quiet, silent way. Not a silent way, but a quiet, a quiet very uh, humane way of uh, letting the animal die. Strangling the animal, doesn't. <laughs> that's not a good way because then it's panicking and it's fighting for breath. Uh, so don't do that. And the second thing is, if you strangle it, the uh, animal... Uh, will be uh, will still have blood inside of it, and Old Testament, New Testament are very particular about blood. Blood is sacred; it is not something that you just casually use and that you just casually make a part of uh, of your life. You should not eat meat with blood in it. Okay. Uh, sometimes they would take the blood from the animal and they would make a pie out of it. Yum! 
let's all go down to the store and get us some blood pie with the whipped cream on it. Oh, yummy. White and red. Yuck. Um, that's what they would do. And see, blood was sacred. You didn't, you didn't do things like that. So make sure you show a difference is what Paul, uh, Paul is, or what, what the council is trying to put forward. They uh, should not do wicked things. They have, uh, that have connection with sex. Very sexual society. We think our society is very sexual. Uh, their society was very loose in their morals and sex and, and things. So if some people uh, did this, they needed to stop. This often happened when people worshipped idols and false gods. They involved themselves in illicit sex. Uh, the law only allowed Jews to have sex with their wives or husbands. And this is what God wants, Genesis 2, 24. Okay, he doesn't want us just having this horrible playboy society. Okay. So be different. All of these requests are just simple things, asking the Gentiles to show commonality with the Jews, but as well to respect their Jewish brothers and as well to show a difference in their society because people would say, well, why don't you, you know, you go over to somebody's house and they'd have a blood pie and you'd say, I don't do that. Um, so no. And uh, it's just not the way we do things. James did not suggest these rules because they were necessary for salvation, because they're not. He suggested them so that the Jews could mix with Gentiles. Some Jewish Christians would always want to obey all parts of the law, and that was fine. These four rules meant that they could eat with Gentiles and they could be friends with Gentiles. And although the law could not give salvation. It was very important to the Jews. So show respect to each other. That's what Paul will come down in 1 Corinthians 8 saying, you know, disrespect each other. Um, be honest and be good with each other. Uh, you know, you let your brother know that I don't do that, but I realize you do that. So I'm going to show my love for you by being respectful. Part of Jewish history and traditions of Gentiles needed to respect it so they could all live in one big happy family. And again, that's not just, that's, that's just being good to each other. And I'm sorry, but we as Christians need to be good to each other. And in this day and age, we need to be better to each other. Uh, so they, they got the letter to the Gentile believers. And that was taken care of. Uh, they sent the men off on their journey and the men went to Antioch. They gathered the members of the church there together. Then they gave the letter to the members because remember Antioch was a combined church. It was the prototype for churches in the New Testament world to come. And uh, the people read it and they were happy because the message encouraged them. Uh, Judas and Silas were prophets. And um, they stayed in Antioch. And uh, then the believers there sent the men off on their journey in peace. Uh, they blessed the men. The men intended to return to the people who had sent them. But Silas decided to stay in Antioch. See, the, the men, Silas, he came back. And Barsabbas came back and uh, they were going to go back uh, but you know then they, they didn't so then Judas and Silas would have a safe journey uh, verse 34 may not have been in the original count perhaps someone added it later maybe I don't necessarily think that in verse 40, we can see that Silas was in Antioch, and verse 34 shows why he was still there. So Paul and Barnabas stayed in Antioch, and there, there they and many other men taught the Lord's message, and they preached. So they were advancing the Antioch church. The Antioch, Antioch church was getting more mature and getting ready to send out their own missionaries. Paul and Barnabas stayed there and taught and worked from there. And the church in Antioch became 
their base of operations. So God continued to grow his church into the Mediterranean world. So we are going to see Paul go on a second missionary journey here pretty quick. But there is going to be a little dispute with Barney. And uh, we're going to read about that. And what God does with disputes in the church. And I think that's important for us to know as Christians. Because uh, for one thing, we don't handle them correctly. And uh, Paul and Barnabas, mm, I don't know if you're going to say they helped, they handled it correctly, but we're going to see how they handled it and what the results were. God is going to be glorified no matter what. So you believe that and trust in that. God has control. We men and women, we humans, think we have the control, but God is always in control and his will will be done. Okay? Thank you for spending time with us today. And I hope that you're gaining wisdom and uh, understanding this. And as you watch it, please let me know where you're from and what you're doing. And uh, you don't even have to mention a name. But uh, I, I appreciate that this ministry is going out and feeding the people in the church. So God bless you. Give you a good week and give you and your family many blessings. See you Sunday for those of you who are from North Irving. And we will start a series on the Holy Spirit. So, hmm, Baptist talking about the Holy Spirit. So, it'll be good. Y'all take care.